The first thing we'll do is degas it, and that's done simply by unscrewing the bottle. Once the bottle is off, we'll put this to one side. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure that there's no air left inside the plenum of the rifle. We can check that by quite simply looking at the back here, looking at the screen on the back and looking to see if we still have reg pressure in the rifle. The rifle is still reading 107 bar in the regulator, so we need to get rid of that. What we're going to be doing is firing the rifle in a nice safe direction to remove any and all air that's present in the rifle. With just a few dry fires in a nice safe direction, we see that the gauge on the back there is now reading zero. So we can assume that the rifle is now completely out of air. We will, however, be doing a mechanical check before we touch either the regulator or the valve. We will, however, talk you through that as we get to that stage. The next thing we're going to do is remove the battery. We do that by flipping the rifle on its end and locating the battery cover latch pulling that back and lifting the butt piece up. Slide the butt piece off and in the back here we see the battery. We're going to pull that out nice and simply and then locating the switch wires there we're just going to grab them nice and carefully and pull them out. Now as with all the connections on the Delta Wolf it's very important to grip the connection themselves or all of the wires together. So either the white connection, pull from the white connection off, or if you can't do that, grip all the wires together and pull nice and safely. Pulling on one individual wire can damage the connections and may pull them out from the connectors themselves. As we're doing a full disassembly of the rifle, it is recommended to leave the rifle overnight with the battery disconnected in order to allow the capacitors to discharge completely. At this stage, we'll be leaving the rifle overnight with the battery disconnected, and then we'll be continuing on with the disassembly in the morning. With that out of the way, we can now begin the disassembly of the rifle. The first thing we're going to remove is the barrel. To do that, we're going to loosen this grub screw here using a 3mm Allen key. This doesn't need to be removed entirely, just a few turns. And that will allow us to slide the barrel out. The next thing we're going to be removing is this back piece here. First thing we'll do is upend the rifle and remove this bolt in the back here. That's done using a 3mm Allen key. With that done, we can tease this wire up here and then we can remove it. So, as with all connections on the Delta Wolf, we need to be incredibly careful as we remove them. You always want to be gripping the connection itself, the white piece itself, or by the bulk of the wires. Just like when we disconnected the battery, we need to be nice and careful not to pull on any individual small wire here. So to remove this back connection, I'm just going to tease the wire up nice and carefully. And then by getting a good grip on the connection itself, just gently pull up and remove the connection, like so. Next up we need to remove the cheek piece in order to gain access to the bolts on top. So to remove the cheek piece we simply need to loosen these two screws here using a 2.5mm allen key. Once they're both loose the cheek piece can be slid off and we gain access to these four bolts here. To remove them we're just going to be using a 3mm allen key. With those four bolts removed, we can loosen this grub screw in the side here using a 3mm Allen key. Once that's done, we can slide this back block off from the block of the rifle itself. First thing we'll do though, is make sure the connections up here are tucked away nicely so that they don't get caught as we remove the back block. Then just poke them up in the top rail there, like so, so that they're out of the way. Once they're out of the way, we can just slide the back block off the rifle nice and carefully. As you take the back piece off, there is a spring in the end there, so make sure that it doesn't ping out and get lost. Now that we have the rear section of the rifle removed, we can carry out a mechanical safety check to make sure that there's no air left inside the rifle. What we're going to do to carry out this check is just quite simply here, press on the valve, 
like so. And because we compress it and no air is escaping from anywhere, we know that the rifle is completely degassed, meaning that there's no air left trapped in the plenum chamber. And obviously, as we've disconnected the bottle, there's no air supply. And before either the valve or the regulator is removed from the rifle, you do need to do a mechanical safety check of the rifle. I've carried it out on this one, so we're safe to proceed. Like the regulator, the valve does have a specific valve removal tool from Daystate. And like the regulator, whilst it's always better to use the official Daystate tool, you can get away with a set of snap ring pliers. So this is a set of snap ring pliers, and if we just use the angled pair like so, a nice good quality set, put them in the holes like that, and then we can loosen the back piece here. Now I've got the tool, so I'm going to be using the tool, but it is possible to remove it with snap ring pliers if you're in a pinch. With the tool fitted onto the valve, quite simply we line up the pinholes with the pins, drop that on like that, then by using a 19mm spanner we can simply loosen the nut. After a couple turns, it'll be loose enough that we can unscrew it by hand. And with the nut removed, we can grip a hold of the rifle firmly and the valve, give it a nice pull and it should come out. They can sometimes be fairly tight, so you may need to grip the shaft, this part here, with some nice soft jaws on a pair of pliers, something similar, and get it out that way. My one, however, I was able to pull it out. It does have two sealing O-rings, one larger one and one smaller one, so just be careful they don't get lost as you take the valve out. First things first, small amount of silicon grease to these three O-rings here. And then, whilst aligning the transfer port, this hole here, with the top of the block, so the top of the block here, we can push the valve in nice and gently. The valve itself is keyed, so as we push it in, we need to give it a little wiggle, just to make sure it seats in the keyway, and then check it by trying to rotate the valve. The valve shouldn't be able to rotate once we've got it keyed in correctly. Next, we'll add these two sealing O-rings here. And as always with the O-rings, small amount of silicon grease on them before they get installed. And we'll just gently seat them so they don't get torn as we install the retaining nut. So here's our retaining nut. You can drop that over the valve. Get it done up by hand. And then either by using the day state specific tool or by using a set of snap ring pliers, we need to get the retaining nut done up nice and tight. Then we can do that up with a 19 mil spanner. The first thing we'll do is take a look at the electronic connection at the top here. This needs to be nice and tucked away within the top rail. If it's sitting proud of the top rail, it can get cut off as we put the electronic housing back on. So just be very aware of that as we put these two blocks together. With that said, we've got the connection tucked away nicely. The spring in the back there. And once we're happy, we'll gently push the two blocks together. If we take a look in the very back here, Hopefully the camera will pick that up, but the connection is nice and secure within the top rail. So I know we're fully safe to push it home. And there we have it there. The next thing we'll do is add the four securing screws, these four here, to the top rail. Do them up using a 3mm Allen key. Before they're tightened up, just make sure that the electronic housing or the back block is pushed home and then we can do these four screws up nice and tight. With that done we'll add this grub screw to the side. It does have a flat bottom so the flat bottomed grub screw goes in the side here and we can secure that using a three millimeter allen key. So there it is there. With that done we'll flip the rifle on its end and connect this connection here. 
To do that, all we need to do is grip the connection nice and firmly and plug it into this socket here. So that, hopefully you can see that there, that connection with the top socket there. Then we can gently press the wire into the little housing there. So it does have a channel which the wire runs through. We'll get the wire nice and sitting flush. With the wire tucked away nicely, we can now add our cap back. And that's done using a three millimeter Allen key. So the cheek piece can be fit on the right or the left hand side depending on the shooter's preference. And then securing the two screws in the top using a two and a half mil Allen key. With that done, we can bring back the block of the rifle and then install the barrel. So we'll get the barrel reinstalled, nice and carefully, pushing it all the way home. Then if we take a look through the side of the block, we can see whether the barrel is lined up correctly which R1 is, we can see the dimple there in the side of the rifle. So now we're going to install this grub screw here using a 3mm Allen key. With that done, the rifle is pretty much totally rebuilt. The next thing we're going to do is reconnect the battery and then we'll reconnect the air supply. So we'll start with the battery first. If we pick the rifle up and stand it on its end, the battery connection goes into this socket here. So hopefully the camera will pick that up there, but we see the batteries reconnected. And if we look on the side, the display has lit up. Now we can just gently fold the battery back in and gently put it in position. Next, we can take our butt piece and reinstall it in the back, like so. Before we connect any air, what I'm gonna do is just run through the controls and make sure everything's still working as it should. So we flick the safety on and off, the board should light up. If we put the rifle in safe, we shouldn't be able to pull the trigger, even if we cock it. So we know the safety is now working. If we flick it on fire now, and I'll point the rifle in a safe direction, then pull the trigger. So hopefully the microphone will pick that up there, but the hammer is firing still. The next thing we'll try is unlocking the screen. So we'll pull the cocking arm back, put the rifle in safe, and then hold the trigger. And as we can see there, the lock on the display has been removed. And we can scroll through the menu. So there we have it there. So everything's working as it should. If we push the bolt forward, the rifle locks itself and the display goes back to the stand display. So I'm happy that all the functions on the rifle are working. We can now reconnect the air supply. So we'll bring back our bottle and screw that onto the front. Once we feel the bottle start to touch, the next bit is we'll pressurize the rifle. So we need to screw the bottle on nice and quickly. But if we take a look, on the side there, we're reading bottle pressure. With that done, the reassembly of the rifle is now totally complete. The rifle is now ready to take out into the field and to use.